Hệt Huy Hép Tổ chức Huy Hép Tổ chức Huy Hép Founded in 2006 Based in Thừa Thiên Huế Province Huế Help, a non-profit organization, has developed a project to train over 600 teachers and 12,000 children in survival swimming. Là nó có kỹ năng kỹ thuật riêng thì mình truyền đạt rất là dễ. Và các em phải nói rằng là khi khi về dạy các em là các em rất là nhanh được bơi. Con rất bơi ngựa, bơi ngựa con ngắm được bao chơi. Năm bằng mấy? We help also provide education and career orientation for children who are living in poverty. Thực sự là với sự quan tâm hỗ trợ của Huế Hép thì uh, có nhiều em trưởng thành từ trung tâm thì đến nay thì đã có cuộc sống ổn định. Welcome to Talk Vietnam. Our guest today, Graham Buckley, founder of Hue Helps, is joining us from Hue City. First of all, thank you so much, Graham Buckley, for joining Talk Vietnam for the very first time. Thank you for having me. Yeah. So can you tell us uh, some of the activities, the main focus of Hue Helps? Yeah, sure. So um, so we run, uh, at the moment, we have two main programs that we that we operate. Uh, the first is at uh, Hue Children's Shelter. So this is a, this is a home for, for children uh, who have no parents or have uh, no family that are able to care for them at the moment. Um, and it's run by the Department of Labour, Invalids and Social Affairs of Thu Thien Hue. Um, we work at that shelter um, to provide uh, extra education, uh, university scholarships, uh, career orientation and uh, recreational activities as well for the children there. And uh, we've been working there since 2006, since, since the start. Um, we also have another program, a larger program called Swimming for Safety, uh, and this is a child drowning prevention program. Uh, so this works by, we work with the Department of Education and Training in Thu Thien Hue to train school teachers as swimming teachers. And then those teachers go on to train the children in their uh, school in swimming, uh, safe rescue skills, and also water safety awareness as well. That's our larger program, and the main reason that we we operate that is because child drowning is the leading cause of death of children in Vietnam um, between the ages of 5 and 15. Uh, over 2,000 children drown every year. There's a number of different reasons uh, uh, for the high child drowning rates in Vietnam. Um, in, in, it varies depending on location and it varies depending on the age of the child as well. So in terms of really young children, it's quite common for them to drown in and around the home. Um, in wells, in, in even bathtubs, in small ponds or, 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 or lakes near the house. Um, but uh, for school-aged children, which account for the vast majority of child drowning cases, a lot of the time it's just, it's just um, a significant amount of exposure to water. So children are exposed to a lot of water in Vietnam and they're often playing in and around water or they have to travel you know, over water or through water to get to school. Um, so there's a significant amount of uh, exposure to drowning risks there. And um, a lot of children don't know, don't know swimming uh, skills and don't have any water safety knowledge. Teaching swimming is really, really important for, uh, for children. It's recommended by the World Health Organization as a, as a method to introduce in countries with a high drowning burden. Tell us about the success of the uh, Swimming for Safety program so far. So our Swimming for Safety program, since starting that in 2011, we've trained over 600 teachers and over 12,000 children. Um, that's predominantly in Thu Thien Hue. We've also worked in other provinces as well, uh, such as Quang Tri, Quang Minh, Haiphong. Uh, we also have a, a small project that's ongoing at the moment in uh, Pu Lung in, in, in Tan Hoa. So uh, quite, a, quite a, uh, a, a mix of areas across the country as well. Our base has always been in Thu Thien Hue, so we started, the, the organisation started here and uh, our connection with the children's shelter uh, began here. So everything um, initially started in, in Hue. Um, you know, Thu Thien Hue is home to Southeast Asia's largest lagoon. It's got an extensive coastline, lots of rivers. Um, so, so there's certainly high drowning risk here, particularly in the rural areas. Um, but then once this program became more established here, then we, we realised this is a, a nationwide issue um, and we wanted to try and expand it elsewhere as well. Do you know Thu Thien Hue province on the central coast has one of the highest annual rainfalls in Vietnam? 
Moreover, Tutinhue has lagoons. The water surface area of ponds and rivers is quite large. In the summer, students aged from primary school to high school often follow their friends to swim in rivers, ponds, lakes, and more. So the risk of drowning is very high. Therefore, Hue Help has chosen Thừa Thiên Hue to be the headquarters and to train swimming teachers for children. Thì tôi được tổ chức Hue Help tuyển chọn và rất là nhiều năm đã đi các cái đơn vị của các huyện A Lưới, Nam Đông, Phú Vang để hướng dẫn cho các giáo viên của các trường. Con cảm thấy mẹ thấy ở đây dạy rất là tốt, dạy dễ hiểu. Can you give us an example of um, how successful is the uh, Swimming for Safety program? In terms of the successes, yeah, I, th I think, I mean, it started off quite small in 2011 with just, uh, uh, just training 30, 30 teachers um, in uh, Kanzhuang Beach in, in Thuthinhui, who went on to train around 1,200 children, and then things have built up from there. But um, now one of the uh, swimming teacher trainers is a guy called um, uh, Tae Thuong, uh, he's a school teacher and uh, he was on our very first swimming teacher training course uh, back in 2011 and he now is uh, one of our senior teacher trainers um, and now the program has expanded we're also working with uh, the Ministry of Education and Training to train other uh, school teachers in water safety skills we're supporting uh, uh, national drowning prevention initiatives with uh, the Ministry of Labour, Invalids and Social Affairs um, and uh, Tae Thuong is one of the, the key trainers who's delivering that training as well. So that's really wonderful to see and a big success of the program that uh, we have this, this uh, uh, teacher who joined us right at the start and has shown such commitment and such enthusiasm and he's now helping train teachers on a national level. Wonderful. So uh, usually uh, how long is the one training session for, for teachers? For teachers, yes. Yeah. So all, all of our teachers undergo um, uh, an intensive five-day training course. Um, and as part of that training course, they learn um, safety skills. So they learn first aid, they learn CPR, they learn water rescue skills as well, so that um, if anything was go wrong in the lesson, they're, they're, they're equipped to handle that. Um, and then they also have four additional days of teaching methodology, learning how to deliver the, 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 the program uh, and how to conduct the lesson safely. Um, one unique thing or, or, or fairly uh, unique thing about our program is that we operate a lot in, uh, in rural areas uh, and we operate a lot in open water as well. So we teach uh, children to swim in, um, in, uh, in the sea, in the lagoon, in rivers and lakes. Um, and uh, to do that safely and effectively, uh, the teachers also require training in that area as well. So how to set up the sites, how to check the sites daily and how to make sure they're safe for swimming lessons. We are in the coastal commune of Haizung in Hue City. Graham Buckley has taken me to a swimming lesson for students at Haizung Primary School. Uh, so what we do here is uh, uh, we run lessons in, in open water. So that's at the beach, the lagoon, the rivers, um, yeah, beach locations such as this. And we carefully risk assess and select sites before to, to make sure they're safe. When you teach in an area like this, is it different from teaching uh, children in swimming pool? Yeah, when, when, we, when we work in open water, it's really, really important that we, that we carefully select the site first. So we, do a, we, we, we check the site in a number of ways. Firstly, we make sure that there's no sort of hazards underfoot, no, no rubbish, no litter that's going to cause any injury. It's also really important that we make sure that the, the water depth is consistent across the area and also that it's no deeper than, than chest height of the, of the child, uh, of the smallest child. Um, uh, we also need to look for somewhere 
um, that's kind of quite sheltered as well. So this area here, we've got this wall around here, which is just fantastic. Basically, that's, that's um, helping keep the waves away from the swimming area and make sure that it's pretty calm. Most of the teachers will check the sites every single day before, before the lesson starts. Um, and we also have this system here where we mark out a safe area as well, so all the, all the students stay within one area. Uh, they also learn safe rescue skills. So these are techniques they can use to help other people if they see somebody else in difficulty in the water without going into the water themselves. Very useful. <laughs> uh, each teacher uh, is responsible for five. That's right, yeah. So that's the, that's the maximum, yeah. So always we have one teacher to a maximum of five students. Uh, and they're always there in the, in the uh, yellow uniforms. They're nice and clearly visible. Yeah, looks like the kids are having a lot of fun. Chen Duc Chi, a swimming teacher at Hue Help and Taizung Primary School, is teaching children how to rescue people in difficulty in the water. This is the lesson in the Swimming for Safety project. This year is the fourth year that Hue Help provides swimming courses at Taizung Primary School. Do đó là cái nguy cơ mà đuổi nước, ngập nước rất là nguy, nguy hiểm đến cho kể cả cộng đồng dân cư chứ không phải riêng gì học sinh. Nhưng mà hôm vừa rồi thì được Huế Hẹp tài trợ cho nhà trường tập bơi cho các cháu miễn phí. Thì như vậy là các cháu rất chi là mừng. À, kể cả trường cũng rất là mừng. Trước mà các em ở đây là hầu như 100% là không được bơi. Ví dụ bây giờ ở bên chỗ phía Huế Hẹp người ta tắt ra từng phương pháp nhỏ dù dày như thế nào, chân như thế nào, cơ thể như thế nào, đôi tay như thế nào, cũng đang nó có cái kỹ năng kỹ thuật riêng thì mình truyền đạt cũng rất là dễ và các em phải nói rằng là khi khi về dạy các em là các em rất là nhanh được bơi. We help has coordinated with the school closely to provide information on the swimming courses to each student's family. This time, 80 students have signed up for the course. Mình có hai cháu, một cháu 10 tuổi và một cháu 8 tuổi. Thì hiện tại là hai cháu đã học được hiện tại là năm buổi rồi. Các cháu cũng về kể với mình là thay dạy rất là bài bản, rất là kỳ, dạy các cái đồng tác rất là dễ hiểu và cháu cũng đã tức là biết được những cái kỹ năng bơi cơ bản rồi. Cháu năm nay là 10 tuổi. Nhờ cháu học buổi bơi buổi này là buổi thứ 4. Và đầu tiên là bơi ngựa. Rồi bơi ít vào mùa hè con rất là thích bơi, con lại được học ở thầy chị nên con mới được bơi. Con thích bơi ngựa, bơi ngựa con ngắm được bao chơi. Did you face any uh, kind of challenges or difficulties uh, while implementing the training program? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we we faced quite a lot of challenges actually implementing the swimming safety program. Um, so, you know, we've, we've always tried to, to target uh, low resource rural areas um, as a priority uh, because that's where the drowning risk is, is, is the highest. Um, so in those areas, there's no, uh, no swimming pools or very few swimming pools available. We have a number of safety criteria um, around site selection. So of course the water has to be clean. It has to have no strong currents. Uh, it has to be no deeper than, than chest height of the smallest child. It has to be uh, uh, firm and even underfoot. So finding suitable locations that meet all of these criteria to enable us to run lessons um, safely uh, is always a challenge. That's one, that's one challenge. Uh, and of course, uh, with it open water, the environment can change as well from day to day with, uh, with rainfall, with storms. Um, so that's another thing that we have to, to always um, adapt to as well. Uh, the weather can be ch quite challenging. Um, it's also seasonal as well, so um, especially in Thua Thien Hue, we, we, we can't run lessons during the, the winter uh, due to the temperature, due to flooding. 
the weather conditions are just not just not appropriate um, and also school schedules are very very busy as well so we really have this um, fairly narrow window of the school summer holidays in which we have to implement lessons um, obviously it, it can also be too hot during the daytime as well so we have to run lessons normally early morning or late afternoon so there's a number of lo- sort of logistical challenges um, around that um, another another challenge that that um, uh, we can also face as well is um, sort of awareness as well awareness in the community and awareness amongst parents um, a lot of communities a lot of parents have um, have witnessed child drowning or, or, or know people who have drowned or have had uh, children who've, who've drowned in their families um, and often as a result of that they can um, um, believe that the best thing to do is just to keep their children away from 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 water at all costs um, and that's an understandable uh, view to take um, so sometimes there's some hesitancy towards when we, when we come to these areas towards um, uh, teaching. What activities did you do to raise the awareness of the parents? Sure, so that's, that's normally done through the school. So schools will normally call a, a, a school meeting with all of the parents before the programme to introduce the programme um, and uh, talk about why it's so important, talk about the, um, how it's kept safe, talk about how the teachers are trained to try and give reassurances to parents. Um, you know, sometimes uh, uh, people are still a little bit sceptical on the first lesson so we don't always have a, a full class on the first lesson yeah. but normally parents come down and they come and see it and they come and speak to the children and then normally after they've done that and they, 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 they see the lessons in action they see that they run really really safely uh, then they start to send their kids. There's one um, story that I can recall of a, a, of a, a mother who we met um, when we were running swimming lessons in Quang Chi. Um, she had uh, sadly lost two of her daughters to drowning. Uh, they were staying at home with another relative and they'd been playing in uh, a river behind the house um, and had sadly drowned while the other relative was, um, was uh, busy washing clothes. So um, when we started running swimming lessons in that area, uh, she came down to, to visit the swimming lessons. Um, she also has a son and um, you know, she was a bit sceptical, she wasn't sure whether that's the right thing to do or not, um, having you know, lost, already lost two of her, her, her children to, to, to drowning um, but after coming to visit the site and speaking with the teachers um, she ended up uh, speaking to other family members and uh, ended up sending her, her son to the swimming lessons. I think that's, that's one example of how um, we can see a, a big change in attitude and, um, and that's really really, really special to us um, to have somebody uh, who, who has been so personally uh, affected, affected by drowning, so tragedy affected by drowning. Um, send their child on to, to the program. Yeah. Well, thank you for the story. And uh, you also talked about how you partner with the uh, Ministry of Education and Training, right? Yes, right, yes. Recently, the Ministry of Education and Training has launched a uh, new water safety education manual. So this is a, this is a really, really important um, national program, um, which the Ministry of Education is hoping will uh, ensure that all children across Vietnam learn some basic water safety uh, skills, basic water safety uh, knowledge um, in the classroom. Uh, and as part of that, we were invited to assist with conducting uh, training for officials from the uh, Department of Education and Training in all provinces across Vietnam. So we ran uh, training courses in uh, uh, Dong Tap, uh, Lao Cai, Hai Phong and Quang Tri. Uh, where different regional training courses for different members of different departments of education and training. Uh, and the idea is they will then go back to, uh, to their provinces and train other people in those skills. Six causes of child drowning deaths. One, adults' carelessness. Two, lack of knowledge of water safety awareness. Three, lack of swimming skills. Four, disobeying safety regulations in waterway traffic. Five, natural disasters. 
6. Improper rescue. So um, what are the assessments that the local authorities uh, have for Way Helps programs? I think uh, uh, our program and particularly the Swimming for Safety program is in full support of, of government policy. So it's in full support of the uh, new um, National Child Injury Prevention Program uh, 2021 to 2030 in Vietnam, which um, sets a target for um, school children to be able to swim. After how many years, since 2006 until now, uh, yes. what's the difference before and after? You know, like before maybe the drowning figures uh, of children are very high, and what is it now? Sure, so the, the, the drowning um, figures in Vietnam uh, fortunately are, are going down. Um, I, I believe the official statistics are there's around uh, 100 less drowning cases every year than the previous year. Um, but obviously it's, 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 still, it's still very, very high. Um, and it's still, the, the rate of child drowning in Vietnam is still around, is still around 10 times higher than, than, than most uh, uh, developed countries. So it's still a still a, a, a major a major issue. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I I hope that uh, there will be more support measures for your program to help reduce. Uh, thank you. Yeah, the number of child drowned yes, uh, thank in you. Vietnam. <laughs> yeah. So now let's talk about the other uh, major activity uh, which you have at the uh, children's shelter, sure. right? In Hue. Yeah. Uh, tell us more about the activities there. When we first started working with the children's shelter. Um, it was it was quite under resourced. 2006, we first started working there, and at that time, um, a lot of the kids were not doing very well at school, or they were they were dropping out of school. Over the years, the the uh, things have changed quite a lot. Um, there's a lot more lo a lot more local support, and the the, the the local authority budget for the shelter has increased. Um, they've moved into a new uh, a new purpose built uh, home, uh, which is great. Around 10 years ago. Um, so our support has, has sort of transitioned from this kind of uh, core support towards a, a more specific focus around extra education on um, recreational activities uh, and also um, supporting children uh, to go into university or to find vocational training and uh, transition towards uh, uh, sort of independence as young adults. Um, so at the moment we hire six uh, teachers who work at the children's shelter uh, and they help the children with uh, all of their, their, their core subjects um, as well as extra subjects such as music as well, uh, music lessons. Um, we've also hired uh, special educational needs uh, tutors who have worked at the children's shelter with some children who've had learning difficulties. We organise um, trips away every summer. Uh, so we organise recreational activities off to the beach, off to uh, Phong Nha, Da Nang, Hoi An, uh, places like that, uh, so the kids can get outside and experience things that children in, in, in normal uh, family environments would be able to do. We can help, uh, help organise extra activities like trips to the cinema, trips away. The other thing that we do is we also uh, help children uh, find what they would like to do in the future. So we um, help with applications to university, if children would like to go on to higher education. Uh, when we first started working at the children's shelter, uh, nobody went on to university. Uh, now we've uh, had a number of children who've gone on to, to, to study at university and graduate in law. We've got one uh, young adult at the moment who's studying graphic design, um, so that's, that's fantastic. Um, we also help connect them with vocational training opportunities as well, if that's the route that they would, they would prefer and is more suitable for them. Um, so there was one, one girl in particular who, uh, uh, she wanted to become a, a PE teacher initially. Uh, and she applied for university to become a, a, a PE teacher, but unfortunately she wasn't accepted because of her height. Uh, she was uh, considered to be too small at the time. She was uh, upset at the time and um, uh, really disappointed by that. But then uh, after that we helped connect her with uh, streets in, in Hoi An. And she went on to the uh, train at the, the hospitality school. Uh, following on from that, she went to get a job in a, in a, in a five-star resort in, in, in Vietnam, uh, which was great, she really loved it. Uh, and then when she was working at that five-star resort, she also met uh, uh, a couple who uh, were visiting from Singapore, uh, and they were really, really impressed with her. And they also worked at a hotel in Singapore. And after that, they invited her over to, to Singapore, and now she's living and working over there. That's great. Uh, so it's fantastic, yes. There's lots of, lots of success stories like that. 
In addition to the Swimming for Safety project, where help has provided education, career orientation, life skills training, and university scholarships for children at Hui Children's Shelter. Thì suốt trong hơn 10 năm qua thì tổ chức Hui Help đã cùng trung tâm chúng tôi là quan tâm hỗ trợ chăm sóc cho các em um, từ việc học tập như là hỗ trợ cho các em giáo dục đặc biệt hỗ trợ học thêm học nâng cao cho các bạn đang học tại các trường phổ thông ngoài ra cũng hỗ trợ các hoạt động thể dục thể thao vui chơi giải trí cũng như là cả cái lớp phát triển kỹ năng năng khiếu như là lớp bơi lội rồi là kỹ năng làm bánh đánh đàn vân vân thì um, thực sự là với sự quan tâm hỗ trợ của Huế Hép thì uh, có nhiều em trưởng thành từ trung tâm thì đến nay thì đã có cuộc sống và công việc ổn định Currently, sick children at Hui Children's Shelter need special education. Hui Help has worked with specialist tutors to help those children learn how to read and do basic maths so they can take vocational training in the future. Hui Help has given scholarships for many young people so they can find a job and have a better future. Tôi cảm thấy là rất là vui khi quay lại cái nơi mình là sinh sống từ lúc nhỏ tổ chức hội hẹp là à, góp phần để mà cải thiện những cái kỹ năng cũng như là góp phần để mà hoàn thành cái chương trình đại học của tôi tôi đã sinh sống ở đây và hiểu rõ các em như thế nào và hiện tại tôi là một cán bộ dự án và muốn góp một phần để là à, giúp các em cũng như là truy cảm hứng là cho các em cố gắng học tập hè thì tôi à, về các chương trình bơi và phụ trách thêm một cái mảng hoạt động với trung tâm This is the way we help contributes to the social works of caring for and protecting children, especially disadvantaged children. The organization aims to ensure the best support for children at Hui Children's Shelter so they can have a peaceful childhood and a bright and independent future. In your opinion, what is the most remarkable result that Hue Help has achieved? In, in relation to the children's shelter, our biggest achievements are um, uh, helping children find opportunities uh, for higher education, vocational training and, and transition into, into adulthood. So, you know, leave, leaving, leaving home at uh, 18 to go off to study or to go off to find a job or, or whatever, is, it's, it's, it's always a challenge for everybody, um, right? It's always, it's always a challenge. Um, but if you don't have a family, if you don't have that family support, um, then it's even, it's even more of a challenge and it's really, really difficult. Um, so that's, that's an area where I feel we've made, we've made a really uh, big difference and um, we can really, really see the, the, the difference there. Um, in terms of uh, our swimming programme, our biggest achievement, I think, is, 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 is the number of teachers that we've trained uh, and the number of students that they've been able to go on to train as well. So 600 teachers, over 12,000 uh, children. We've also shared um, our experience at an international level as well. Um, so the World Health Organization recently uh, produced uh, practical guidelines on teaching swimming. Uh, and uh, we worked as an external reviewer for that, so reviewed our guidelines and our programs actually mentioned in those guidelines as well. Um, so that's really, really fantastic that uh, I think after, after 10 years uh, of implementation uh, that we're able to share experiences both at a national level uh, and also internationally as well. Right. Uh, now I want to ask you a question about COVID. Yes, sure. uh, yeah, during the past two years, COVID uh, has changed so many things and created many challenges. Yeah. Um, so uh, how did Hue help cope with COVID? So uh, yeah, COVID uh, was, uh, was a big challenge uh, for everybody, I think, and um, uh, we were no exception to that. It had a big impact on, on the children's shelter and all the children at the children's shelter. With all the social distancing measures that were in place, uh, they weren't able to leave the shelter for, for, for long periods of time. There were long periods of time where we weren't able to, to send our tutors even to go to the shelter because of the the restrictions that were that were understandably in place in terms of our swimming program, we're quite lucky to be based in 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 Hue, uh, where the pandemic was uh, fairly uh, well, very well controlled actually for the majority of uh, of last year. 
there wasn't a large outbreak in, in, in Hue in the same way as there were, was in other parts of the country. We were still able to conduct some swimming lessons and able to, 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 to move forward a bit. We also worked with the uh, Global Health Advocacy Incubator. It's one of our uh, partners and uh, the Ministry of Labour, Invalids and Social Affairs to produce some, uh, some national guidelines on how to keep children safe during the time of COVID. Um, one thing that we noticed is there was quite a number of drowning cases at the time uh, in relation to children being off school. So a lot of the time schools were closed, um, children are staying at home, but parents still have to go out and work. So we've helped produce some guidelines for, for, for parents to raise awareness about this issue and how they could keep children safe from drowning during the time of COVID. Um, we also uh, helped produce some uh, guidelines on how to run swimming lessons safely in the time of COVID as well. Swimming is one of those things that uh, sadly we can't teach online. Uh, so yeah, we had to, uh, couldn't do any online classes there, but we did do a lot of um, um, uh, work uh, on social media as well to try and raise awareness about the issue of drowning and what uh, what parents can do to, to keep their children safe from drowning during that time. Yeah, well I think it's a smart way to uh, raise the awareness uh, yeah, by utilising uh, social uh, media yeah, thank yeah, you. Yeah, to send out the messages. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So many people are on social media now and um, uh, there's, still a, there's still a big uh, lack of awareness about the scale of the problem and also a lack of awareness about um, some practical things that people can do you know, at home to reduce drowning risk as well. Right. Rescuing a drowning person. Shout for help. Advise the drowning person to relax and float. Look for suitable objects in the surrounding area to rescue them safely. Rescue with a stick. Lie down. Give the stick to the drowning person on the sides. Instruct them to hold the stick. Advise them to kick and relax. Drag them to the shore. Rescue with a rope. Effective rope winding. Wind the rope into even circle. Step on the shorter part and throw the longer part to the drowning person. Drag them to the shore. Rescue with a floating object. Throw the floating object to the drowning person. Throw from a low height. Throw the object in front of the drowning person. Advise them to hold the object and swim to shore. So, uh, working for Hui Help, <coughs> what makes you most proud of, you and your staff? Well, uh, there's a number of things. Uh, firstly, I feel very, very proud of our staff, uh, both, uh, both past and present, uh, who are all uh, really, really committed and who work, work extremely, extremely hard. Um, um, I also feel very proud when um, uh, seeing the children uh, grow up uh, at the children's shelter and uh, go on to study or go on to work or go on to vocational training, whatever it is they wish to do. So there's also an, also a, an, another boy um, I can recall who uh, uh, had finished school and was um, you know, kind of at a loss what to do. He didn't really he didn't really um, know what he wanted to do in the future. So you know we worked very closely with him at that time to help find an opportunity that was. Uh, that was suitable for him and that, that he'd get excited about. Um, and eventually he, he uh, chose to apply for Streets International School in, uh, in Hoi An. Um, and uh, we have a partnership with Streets, uh, so uh, we help make that, that connection and assist with the application process. Uh, and then thankfully he was accepted. Um, he studied there for one year. Uh, then went on to get a job um, as a as a sous chef in a in a in a five star resort, and uh, I just saw him a, a couple of years ago, uh, actually, and um, you know by by chance uh, at at this resort, and um, it's just really wonderful to see how happy he is and um, how much he's enjoying his uh, his job yeah, and his yeah, career. Yeah, you know what I find wonderful is. Um, uh, your organization acts like a bridge, helping to connect all of the children, uh, disadvantaged children, with opportunities, and then you know connect them with uh, social enterprises, for example, right? Yes. So they can have a better future. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, it's just you know taking the time to to understand the children, understand um, what their dreams are, what their ambitions are, what their passions are, help them become aware of all the different opportunities that are out there. Um, and help connect them with those opportunities as well. Um, so just giving them a bit of support, um, showing 
um, that uh, showing them that, that you know we believe in them. So now uh, I want to ask about uh, what keeps you and your staff motivated uh, in doing what you guys are doing here in Vietnam. I think um, there's a number of things that keep us um, motivated. Um, I think working very closely with the children's shelter and really, really knowing all of the kids well um, is a really big motivating factor. Um, and seeing the impact that um, you know, offering that assistance to other children has had in terms of finding other opportunities and uh, transitioning into independence, uh, uh, seeing the, the impact that that's had on, on, on their lives. In terms of the swimming program, um, I think there are, there are, there are both positive um, motivators there. Um, so again, you know, seeing, uh, seeing the children improve uh, from, from not being able to swim at the start to being able to swim at the end, listening to teachers about uh, uh, how they feel about the program and the impact that it's having on the community, speaking to parents who, who um, really value it and uh, really understand that it's important for the safety of their children. Um, but also, of course, uh, you know, uh, we also regularly read about drowning cases as well, and we know that it's still an ongoing issue. So reading about these drowning cases that are happening um, nearly every day is also uh, a factor that keeps us motivated to continue to work in this area and continue to do all we can to prevent child drowning. How to wear a life jacket properly. Choose a life jacket that fits you. Put your life jacket on. Fasten all the chest and belly buckles. Choose a life jacket with two straps on the back. Pull the back straps between your legs and fasten them to the front side of the jacket. Fasten both rear buckles. Adjust the straps on the two sides to fit your body. So what are the future plans for Hui Help? Sure. So, uh our future plans at Huey Help uh, is to focus um, more and more on uh, child drowning prevention. Um, as, child, uh, as drowning is the leading cause of death of children in Vietnam, um, it's, a, it's, it's a really, really urgent issue. Um, and it's one that we feel uh, we're very well placed to, 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 to help address as best we can. Um, so we are trying to uh, focus on Thua Tien Huey and develop Thua Tien Huey province as kind of um, uh, a model for effective child drowning prevention. So that means expanding swimming lessons in more and more schools. We also have a target of making sure that every single school child gets some basic knowledge about where it's safe to swim, where it's not safe to swim, um, how to, what to do if they see other people in difficulty in, in the water, uh, what to do if they get into trouble in the water. These simple but really, really important uh, water safety uh, skills and knowledge. Um, so we're, we're working on that. Um, we're also looking at um, other ways we can help prevent child drowning as well. So we're looking at um, specific risk factors for different areas. So uh, one project that we're looking on at the moment is placing uh, public access life rings along various uh, areas along the river and bridges where people often swim. We're also looking at uh, putting signs in places where people have been known to drown. I think there's been a big, uh, a really big push at the national level um, uh, in relation to child drowning in, in, in recent years. At the moment, we are also working with uh, an organization called the Global Health Advocacy Incubator, who are working with uh, the Ministry of Labor, Invalids and Social Affairs on a national child drowning prevention program. Uh, that's funded by Bloomberg Philanthropies um, in the US. Um, and that's a fairly large drowning prevention program which consists of water safety education, also swimming lessons across multiple, multiple provinces. Hopefully with the uh, effective collaboration between uh, Hue Help and uh, the Vietnamese government, we would see uh, the number of child uh, drowned in the future in Vietnam. Yes, absolutely. Significantly decrease. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. The, 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 there was recently a new um, child injury prevention plan in, in, in Vietnam, uh, the child injury plan from 2021 to 2030. 
uh, and drowning prevention is a really big part of that, a really big component of that. So it's, it's, it, I think it's really, really positive to see the, the steps that national authorities are taking um, on this issue. Um, and uh, we, we are very happy to support that in, in any way that we can. So uh, we are coming to the end of our program today. Um, would you like to send a message to our audience out there? I'd just like to mention that there are a number of uh, key things that parents um, and those looking after children can do to help reduce the risk of drowning. Um, at home, there are very, very simple things that you can do, such as making sure that any drowning hazards in the home are covered. So that can be uh, things like covering up wells, ensuring bathroom doors are closed, ensuring that buckets of water are not left around the home. So uh, those things are really, really important, especially for houses where you've got uh, very young children, toddlers. Um, we also strongly recommend that uh, where available, um, when your child is of, of, of school age, if you can send them to swimming lessons, um, please do. It's a really, really important uh, uh, initiative and a really important step that you can do to help keep children safe around water. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much, Graham, for your messages. And uh, we wish you and we help all the best for your future projects here in Vietnam. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for the time. And that has brought us to the end of this episode of Talk Vietnam in Hue. I hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you again next time.